and that should do it. That should do it. Yes, the Model X has been able to do what the Model 3 couldn't do. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well. Today we are in my Model X. Uh, this was really heavily requested and I'm actually going to be doing the same navigate on autopilot journey that I just did in my Model 3. So if you want, you can open up the Model 3 video on another device or another browser and you can watch them both side by side because I'm going to go the same speed and tackle the same junctions. Now obviously last time this happened, it really didn't work very well. It was, oh yeah, of course this isn't the Model 3 is it? This is a different car. Um, it didn't work very well at all. We had loads of issues, um, including autopilot um, turning off and on constantly. Well, at least navigate on autopilot. Uh, it failed to come off at a couple of the junctions as well. And even though it could recognize tr uh, the traffic cones, it seemed to struggle to actually get itself um, through the middle of the traffic cones without following the lines and going all over the place. And what I want to show you today is how good Hardware 2 is on my Model X. So this is the 2017 Model X. The software that I'm currently running is uh, down here for you, 2019.32.12.7. And it's the exact same weather conditions. It's really, really sunny. But there is actually something a little bit interesting about this car. Actually, a couple of things. First of all, obviously, as you saw there, it doesn't get the traffic uh, cones down here in the instrument cluster. There's cones coming up here on the left, which are really, really obvious and clear, and you can see it's not picking it up. But it does pick up the two lines uh, when it goes to two lines on the left. So it's got the line update, but it just doesn't do the cones, which is a little bit of a shame, but that shows that you haven't obviously got the latest hardware. Here you go, loads of cones and it's not even bothered by them. But what I want to find out is, does it, showing the cones, does that actually make any difference to how it, how it drives when going through the cones, or is it just a visual thing for our eyes to see? So, I didn't realize she was still on. We've got our first exit coming up in a minute. It actually did this exit pretty well, if I remember correctly. So I'm expecting it to do this one well as well. Um, but one thing I have noticed before we get to this, look at this photo real quick. I've just taken this photo of the right hand side pillar camera in my car. And yes, it is a cold morning and you can clearly see there's condensation in there or it's a little bit foggy. And I've only just noticed this. I've not had any error messages come up. So I'm intrigued to see if that makes any difference, but that really shouldn't be happening. And I will get into touch with Tesla about it uh, and see what they say. So here we coming, we're coming off here on junction three. Uh, again, this worked fine in my Model 3, so hopefully in the Model X it should work just as well. I think it's got a little bit of like a run runoff to it and then it comes off. Yeah, here we go. So it's breaking down for it here, indicating left, going down the slip road, and it did that really, really well. And is this going to do as well as the Model 3? The Model 3 almost got us the whole way around this corner, uh, if you remember correctly. And you can see that the Model X is attempting to. And oh, it did the, you know what? It did pretty much exactly what my Model 3 did. Okay, now I need to turn around. That actually did that really well and a lot better than I was anticipating it to do. Um, okay, so here again, it did come on here last time correctly, but I think it asked us to do the lane change. Let's see what this car does. It's not asking us to do a lane change, but it will fling us over and we are in the correct lane. So that <laughs> that did work, but it wasn't uh, quite navigating on autopilot. Actually, in fact, navigating on autopilot for some reason was turned off there. So we'll turn that back on. Uh, it's asking us to lane change, and I'm not sure why. And actually, that's a little bit dangerous considering we just had that M3 blast past us. I don't know why it's still asking me to change lanes. I really don't want to change lanes. It's still asking me, which is annoying. But yeah, it did that really nicely. So that was a good start. We've not had any um, failed lane changes as of yet, and I've not had anything extreme happen. Now, this bit towards uh, where the roadworks were, were absolutely fine on the Model 3. So let's fast forward to that point as well. Unless something happens, I'll bring it back. The roadworks are just in a mile now, so we're gonna get into that area where there's cones on both sides and kind of lines go a little bit everywhere. Now, there have been loads of lines on this road on this journey, but in the Model 3, it went left, right, left, right slightly for, whereas in this car, it actually has so you see this line here? That actually would make it, the Model 3 go a little bit... Okay, I don't know where he's going. I'll oh, give them a bit of space. Uh, it would actually just make it a little bit different and it would make the car go off very, very slightly. Whereas now, uh, in this car, I'm actually not getting that issue, which is pretty nice. 
We've come into the 50 zone again here, but as you can see, the car doesn't slow itself down to 50 to recognize the speed limits. Uh, and if it allows me, what I might do is I might go over to the right-hand side here uh, and try, try the cones again like I did on the Model 3. So I'm gonna bring this down uh, to 48. I'm just gonna see what a lane change does. How well does a lane change work? Look at that, the lane change works really, really well there. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. There's no one behind me but I'm gonna back off from this car in front. Now you can see the car has actually asked me to lane, uh, change lanes here. So the car can clearly see that there's something in front of it. What happens if I ignore it? It pushes it over very slightly and yeah, it, it just starts pushing it over. But again, it doesn't ever do it enough where it wouldn't hit a cone. If I'd have left that there, it would 100% hit that cone. Like it, it just would have done. And now we've got that weird buggy thing. There we go. Yeah, it, it would have just like, just touched the side of the cones. Uh, which is weird, I'm, I'm surprised it doesn't push itself over more, but we did see the car say, hey, we, we need to get into that left lane. So it was more of an improvement in my opinion. Now, how is the car gonna behave here? Again, it's favored that left lane that the Model 3 took. There's definitely a bias to, to this line. So clearly this line here, it follows, oh, it's gone slightly over it. So maybe it's following the right line now. Yeah, okay, it's following the right line. This is definitely a lot more steady down the middle of this road, let's bump it up to 50, uh, down the middle of this road than the Model 3 was. I feel the Model 3 was a little bit more left and right. And don't forget, it wasn't able to do this junction at all. And I'm really excited to see if this is going to. It says unsupported exit. Yeah, it, it is gonna turn us off. And if I try to make that turn, I don't think we have enough time, do we? Is it gonna take, yeah, it is gonna take the turn. And, oh, it did, it did actually take it. So it did take it. And as you can see, autopilot navigation is gonna end in a second. And it's gonna try and take us, I assume around this, around this bend, which is exactly what it's done. And it's kind of stopped us a little bit early. But actually, that was relatively impressive. And I see from that now why um, my Model X actually fail, uh, sorry, my Model X, my Model 3 failed. It does say on it uh, that it's going to turn off if we continue on this route. Okay, so we're gonna be coming back on it here. And then as we come on it, we'll put autopilot back on. And then I'm just gonna go, I don't quite know where the turning off is. So I'm just gonna put this up here and hopefully that will at least get us on to navigate on autopilot. Okay, it's bringing us across. It's, it's indicating. Uh, is it going to? Whoa, there was no way. So if I if I hadn't have done that there, it would have uh, it would have hit into those cones, even though it was indicating, and it, it's still indicating. Yeah, I tell I tell you what, this is um, it's a little bit buggy. Yeah, it is a little bit buggy. Uh, I did have an update on the Model 3 like yesterday after I did the video, but the Model X hasn't had any update. And as you can see, it's still good, but it's a little bit confused at some points. And I think it just needs to tell you 100% you know, when it can do the on and off ramps. And it seems sometimes to indicate when it doesn't need to. But what you can see is that the Model X is holding this way nicer. All of the cones down here, and literally, I mean, there's cones everywhere, but you can see that the two lines on the outside in the Model X are drawing us attention, whereas in the Model 3 at this point, it was more this kind of middle line here uh, that was drawing its attention. So it's strange that the Model X seems to be a little bit better on these kind of roads. So this is a very, very long strip here of cones that we've got coming. You can see that the turnoff's gonna be in about eight and a half miles. Um, so I'm gonna fast forward this. Anything worth noting and picking up, I'll bring it back to. Navigate an autopilot back on, and we're gonna go for an overtake. This is on the bridge as well. The light is beaming down on us. What's the car gonna think? No major problems with that. That was all really nicely done and nice and smooth. I'm just gonna speed it up a tiny bit just so that we can get in. I just wanted to have enough time. I don't want there to be any excuses, you know, for the car for if it doesn't if it doesn't do this correctly. Again, it's not asking me to turn in though. So I'm gonna turn in on my own, but it's not asked me to do that. That was a lot nicer, that was a lot more steady. I don't know why it's not asking me to come off though. It seems to be a little bit confused, and is it going to? There we go, all right, it's done it in the end. 
last second and it's come off quite quick but it did it nicely that was nice and confident and it's still taking it oh a little bit of acceleration there and a little bit of deceleration still indicating and it's still doing this the other now the model 3 wasn't able to do any of this you heard we went slightly over the line there but that was was actually really quite impressive i'm really quite impressed with how it did that and it did it more successfully i would say than the other version on my model 3 so yeah definitely well done kind of but the system still isn't perfect okay let's set this back up shall we to go across the m50 again and just do a little bit more so on this way back was when we had so many issues with autopilot turning off so i'm i'm assuming that it's because we're facing into oh my god that's so tight on that left curb but it did it really nicely yeah it's doing all of this and this is on navigate on autopilot now whoa okay i guess it wasn't expecting us to come on all right there's no cars around just kind of waiting for it to pick up some speed I'm intrigued to see, it's saying upcoming lane change, so I'm gonna confirm the lane change. Across it, as a plane comes across, that's awesome. And look at that, it did it, it, did it really well, and it actually did it all the way from the roundabout, which is pretty insane. I wasn't actually expecting it to do it from the roundabout. So I'm gonna wait again until the car tells me it thinks it should overtake. Oh, and I'm getting a text. Now it's saying that it thinks I should overtake, so I'm gonna start initiating it and the cars come over really nicely. And now we're gonna get into some challenging areas. So I'm obviously gonna be going back into the left lane in a minute, but we have got a car coming behind us and I'm intrigued to see whether the car deals with it this time or if again, it's gonna be a common issue with uh, this version of Navigate on Autopilot. Going for the left turn and no, look at that. This time it was completely successful. No problems at all. We're gonna be doing another lane change in a second. I would be going over now, but I'm just gonna again wait for the car to tell me. Very interesting though, if I don't if I don't do it myself, the car is very, very happy just to sit behind uh, the other cars in the queue. So you can see here that I'm I'm just sat and there's there's no reason that for me not to overtake. Even though I am on Mad Max mode, it still doesn't quite want to overtake. So I'm gonna go for it now. And then we're moving across. And even though we're going into some sunshine, which is completely blinding, like I'm not lying, this is completely blinding me. The car hopefully will deal well with it. Let's just, this is a real test of character for autopilot, including a lane change. This is really, really bright. But it did it, and it's still going fine. I'm, even, I'm having to use my hand. I've even got a cap on. Actually, I'm just gonna put my cap really low. There we go. Now, it is slightly flicking between these two lines by the feel of it. It's not completely solid. But it's doing all right. Oh, go away, phone. Oh, what's it gonna think of this car on the left? Any interest? doesn't look like it it doesn't show that person uh, on the side at all no it didn't show it at all so I guess it was of no interest now interestingly the, the lines actually look like they go slightly right here yeah I would say that line is more prominent too and the car started to follow it and then it came back over so I agree with what the car saw it's asking me to change lanes into the cones right there and then it was like oh shit don't do that actually that's uh, yeah that's a lawsuit so it, it's decided to change that and now let's see if it will cross over here. The Model 3 hugged quite a lot because of this solid white line. But you can see it has gone over it. it. Oh my gosh, it went way too far to the right there. That was quite scary. But I held my nerve somehow. And yeah, it's still doing, okay, so it's slightly following the left line now. Yeah, it's definitely favoring kind of um, the left side of it. Oh, no, actually, it's quite solid down the middle now. Yeah, a little bit of bouncing, but again, not too hard. It's going to follow this line. This line here, when the sun hits it, 
is definitely the more dominant line, that is for sure. Okay, well, a little bit left, a little bit right. It feels obviously a lot more than it's probably showing you. Yeah, this side of the road, I think because we're coming into the sunshine, this side, oh my God. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, all right, I'm having to pull it off. It was trying to pull in there so badly that I had to take it off there. So, all right, it didn't do quite as well as my Model 3 did down here. Um, yeah, it, it can see that line and it is fighting to try and get to it sometimes. So I have to obviously be quite on guard, ready to pull it off. Now, luckily there's no one behind us. I'm just gonna tuck up to this car in front uh, a little bit more if I can because this next junction is where it failed at last time and I'm hoping this time we don't have that issue so again the lines cross over here which might make it a bit confusing no it hasn't done it seemed to be okay I'm gonna bring it down to 50 now and we're gonna attempt coming off here so again this is navigating on autopilot through an area that's a little bit confusing and we need to get over to the left lane really quickly and then come off again really, really quickly. So I actually don't want the car to speed up here. So I, I'm, I'm gonna pull the speed down of the car. Is it gonna get, yeah, okay, it's cut across to this lane correctly. And now I'm gonna start indicating and that should do it. That should do it. Okay, that's brought us over and now, yes! The Model X has been able to do what the Model 3 couldn't do. It has brought us off at this junction. Guys, that's really quite incredible. How has the Model X done what the Model 3 can't? Um, let me know what you all think then down below in the comment section about how this has done on the motorway there. It definitely worked better than my Model 3, uh, but it still wasn't great in some areas. I'm not sure, it's a little bit hit and miss again. I'm also gonna do the same route that I did in the Model 3 on A-Roads, uh, which will be a video coming out tomorrow so that you can see exactly how, it, how well it does compared to the Model 3 on these kind of roads. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, don't forget, drive safe.